We are starting this vlog bright and early this morning. It is 7:10 a.m. We have the first tea time at TPCKL's West One. So what I really wanted to focus on today is a combination of a few things. But what we are going to start off with is the difference between playing morning and afternoon golf. I feel like this is not something that a lot of people talk about, and maybe some people don't even realize it. They might just be thinking the only difference is the time, but not only do conditions differ, we also need to learn to adapt to our game, adapting our game to the conditions as they change. So when you play morning golf, chances are the more holes you play, the more the greens and the grass is going to dry out, and this actually can affect your game if you do not realize it. So learning the different conditions and how to adapt to it definitely plays a role. Especially in making sure that your game stays consistent, so you don't want to have a good front nine, and then the conditions suddenly change, and you don't realize it, and then you end up not having a good back nine. So that's obviously not what what we're trying to do. We want to have consistent play. So let's talk about how playing morning golf and afternoon golf might differ a little bit. The things that we need to look out for, and certain conditions that might make morning golf and afternoon golf. Well, for me personally, I would say morning golf can be a little bit more difficult depending on the conditions. As for now in Malaysia, it is kind of like monsoon season. It has been raining every single evening and nights as well. So the grass is very very wet. There's a lot of dew on the grass as well as the rain that has accumulated overnight. You keep asking what this fan is for. I honestly don't know. It just blows my hair and everything when I'm playing. It's quite funny, but I think it's actually to dry the green. So let's start up with the first thing that I feel like most people might not pay attention to, especially if you're playing the same course over and over again. Sometimes in the morning, you might actually have to change your aim. So this hole is a great example. That bunker in the middle is not an easy carry for everybody. So if you are barely carrying that bunker when the conditions are dry, you might want to consider choosing a different aim. If it is not an easy carry for you in the morning with the air being heavier and just you know your body is not as warmed up, it's still pretty cold. You might actually end up hitting a good shot and going in a bunker, which is definitely not what we want. We want good shots to be rewarded, and the way that that's going to happen is to make sure that you have the right aim to be able to execute the right shot. So always make sure that the target that you're choosing is appropriate for the conditions at hand. Cater that. Don't forget to change it if necessary, and don't just stick to your plan every single time. You do need to learn to adapt. So it rained really heavy right last night, so the bunker looks something like this. It's going to be very hard pan. Needs to be played differently. So as I just mentioned, adapting to your environment. Clearly, you can see the bunker here is not what it normally is, but because it is so heavy with water, but at the same time there is still sand, I am still opening the club face and playing it with an open face rather than closing the face, which is what you do on hard pan bunkers because I believe that with a big enough swing I can still get through it, and I did a good job of doing that. So definitely. Not complaining about a bunker shot like that from that bunker. Really, the main goal there is to make sure that you do know what kind of sand that you're playing from. When you pay attention to the sand, then you're able to adapt your shot better. Because if I just hit a regular shot, I would have probably ended up being short because the sand is so heavy. So you do need to hit it harder. So that's some another example of needing to adapt to the conditions and the environment. So let's move on to hole three. So for hole three again. I'm hitting a three wood, but instead of aiming to the bunker like I normally do, I'm actually aiming a little bit more right because if it was in the afternoon right now, I would actually be hitting a five wood. But since it is so wet, I'm hitting a three wood and just going more towards the right side to make sure that my three wood does not roll into the bunker, because I know that I if I do hit a good shot, there is a chance that that is going in the bunker. So of course I could just hit my five wood there, but I felt like the three wood was the better option. And as you can see here, I'm just about two yards too far right, so I'm in this little rough, but it's really not too bad. Although it wasn't a bad place to miss it to, there was actually grass right behind the ball. As you can see, my club when I put it down was actually the ball was quite severely below it, 
so it caught, made it really easy to catch it heavy which is what happened but the good news is this is a par 5 so that favorite was really just a layup shot so after that i still had this approach shot into the screen it is 143 yards i'm a bit on an uphill lie which tends to make the ball draw more but as you can see there is trees down the right side so i definitely cannot aim too far right and that is why i just ended up aiming left of those trees and letting the draw naturally take its place either way we want to get it on the green even if it's not as close to the pin see the thing is when you already hit a bad shot your next goal is just to get it on the green don't try to be cute i really should have been hitting towards the right side of the screen because it slopes left but if i hit towards the right side that tree came into play and i don't really want to take that after hitting a bad second shot so just getting it on the green is the main goal right now so as you can see here, there is a big slope that makes everything go towards the left if you hit it left of this pin and that is why I have a pretty long putt but as I mentioned, still on the green, still have a putt which is much better than having to chip again. So with that putt, I hit a decent putt and just gave myself a tapping par. <laughs> so if you could not see the guy was standing right where the pin is and i guess that is another obstacle that you have when you play early in the morning especially when they have a lot of maintenance work to do because you know it's been raining so they do need to make sure that they do more to get the course in the condition that it needs to be in so we do appreciate them you know they have to be here out here early in the morning to do all these kind of things but sometimes we just gotta shout for and hope we don't hit them in the head, I guess. So I think I kind of went the opposite direction of where he was and <laughs> hit it left instead of right. But I was still on the green and as you can see, tons of leaves and that was kind of what that guy was doing. He was blowing those leaves out, you know, but as I said, it's monsoon season and it's not just like light rain. It's pretty heavy, heavy stuff. Another thing that I find that you need to pay attention to is green speed. So obviously when it's raining, the green speeds are not going to be as quick and you know, sometimes you might have obstacles on your way like the leaves that we have on this, on my line right here. And what's funny is as I say that, I'm about to hit this part way over because it ended up being a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. I didn't think I hit it that hard, I thought it was pretty good but then after the pin, it actually rolled a ton. So I guess it could just be, well, it could be a little bit of the downhill, obviously. And it also could be just that the greens are not as consistent due to the conditions, which is something that we just have to accept, you know. It's not always going to be perfect. We just got to try to adapt, as I've said. And as you can see, there a complete misread because I saw the way it came down and I thought it was going to go that way, but it ended up breaking the opposite way. So quite a tricky green and a tricky pin position. I'm not hitting it as good as I want to, a bit too much of a draw, so I'm just going to work on that swing thought of holding the follow through again and see how it goes. Just try to stay more committed to my shot, better tempo and holding the follow through. So if you saw the video that I posted about identifying trends, you would probably notice what I've been doing. So the first hole I missed it left, the second hole I think I overcompensated for the miss left on the first and pushed it right instead. And the third hole, well, I kind of already had a draw lie, so it's definitely going to draw. And the fourth hole, I pulled it again so I definitely felt like on this day itself I felt like I was going a little bit left and that's why as I said in that video trying to identify a swing thought is what's best you don't really want to try to work on anything technical when you're swinging on the golf course because that's going to start taking away the freedom of your swing which is not what we want we don't want to start tinkering with the swing if anything we do want to just try to get a tech a non-technical swing thought if possible Find something that works for you. I felt that this is something that works for me because it allows me to focus on one thing but also not something that's technical. It's something that seems very easy but something that kind of makes my mind focus on that rather than what I shouldn't do or the places that I don't want to go. So personally for me, I feel like that is what a swing thought should do. It should help you focus your mind on what you need to focus on and take away the other things, you know, some people might see a th swing thought as some kind of technical thing, but if it is a technical th thought, I think it should be something that 
trigger something. So it's not necessarily, even though it's technical, it might not necessarily be something they're actually working on. It might be something like hold your head or hold your finish or have quiet wrist, something like that, which is technical, which is technically technical because it's parts of your swing. But at the same time, it's also something that just helps you trigger a focus and something that just tells you, okay, you're set, let's go. So that's really what a swing thought is to me. And that is why I try to focus on my swing thought when I am not hitting it as well as I would like to. What's your lucky tea? <laughs> so for those of y'all who ask me how many teas I lose to that water, a lot. <laughs> okay, so again, another thing that I was talking about which is adapting. So right now, it's actually getting a little bit, the sun has come up, so it is getting a little bit drier. But we still, in the morning, there is a tendency to need to use more club. So obviously for holes like this, where it just tends to go I mean, it tends to play longer for in general. I feel like when I've played here so many times, it always plays longer. So on holes like this, I really do try to take more club, specifically when I'm playing in the morning. And I had a decent club choice there, but it hit that slope and bounced to right. So as you can see, now I have a very, very difficult chip. So my only option here was to fly it as high as I could and just hope that it stopped as fast as it could because you know even though the green is wet it is not that wet that it would just spin to a stop and I hit a pretty good flop shot there and it's probably the best that I could do we didn't want to hit it too short and it come back down the slope look at this cool limited edition putter how cool is that so for the rest of this round, I'm just going to putt with this putter just for the fun of it honestly because my friend told me that he would like to see me putting with it and you know this is my literal first part with it first putt with it and if you can see it is definitely a very difficult putt so making this was going to be a miracle but I hit a decent putt but I must say my first immediate reaction once putting with it was I realized that the face is a lot softer even though it's a similar model to mine, it even looks almost the same. I would definitely recommend at least hitting a few putts with a putter if you're going to use it out. But as you can see here, I was just putting around the green to make sure that I had a feel for the next few holes. And you know, I really don't find a harm in experimenting. I mean, if you are playing a casual round, you know, just have fun. It's not always, it doesn't always have to be serious. Score is not the most important thing. Sometimes, you know, you might never know. The more you experiment, the more you're comfortable with your game, the more you get to know your, your game better and the more you can adapt. So our main goal with golf is to adapt because every single day is different, right? Every single lie we have is different. Every single thing that you face in golf is never going to be the same. The chances of you having two exact same shots are like one in who knows how many, but I know it's a very, very low percentage. So you really have to learn to adapt. Just think on the fly and just be able to adapt to different conditions. That is basically what I'm saying here. You know, you really have to not only pay attention to your surroundings, pay attention to yourself. And that is why golf is such an amazing game. There's so much to improve constantly, whether it's working on yourself, working on your game, or just learning to be more knowledgeable about golf course and golf course conditions. There are so many ways that we can improve and that is why this is really such an awesome game. What a nice putter. <laughs> It's all the putter. <laughs> so at this point, we have reached hole 8. It is a decent hour right now. The greens are starting to dry out a little bit. And if you are starting to miss your putts long, you might want to consider that the greens might have just sped up. It's not that you're putting harder, it's just that the greens sped up. So you need to start adapting and putting a little bit softer. And it's quite funny how every single time I want to make a point, I make it at the wrong hole because this is the hole that I end up putting it really short. 
But the reason why I want to make it clear is actually because as I said just now when I first put it with this putter, the putter face is a lot softer. So for me, I felt like that was a good speed if I had used my normal putter. But because I was using this putter, it, you know, like I said before, you know, you do need time to adapt. So, you know, that was a three putt. It was a silly three putt. But, you know, it happens to all of us. It's okay. We were just, we just, re I realized that this putter was really, really nice for downhill putts. But I do need to hit it harder when it's an uphill putt or it is a longer putt. I can be more aggressive with it. Anyway, we have reached hole 9 and at this point, if you know what my score is, I would be very impressed because I have not been talking about my score at all. Um, there will be more vlogs where I talk more about each shot by shot. So just let me talk a little bit, like blab a little bit because I feel like that's what I've been doing for this vlog, you know. Sometimes I just forget that I am recording, you know. I just feel like I'm having a conversation about golf. And I enjoy it. I enjoy talking to you guys. So I hope you guys don't find this annoying when I just blab. I know you guys do find it annoying when I blab too much and too fast and put words on the screen and you guys cannot process what is going on. So I will not do that. But you know, sometimes I just enjoy talking because there's just so much to talk about golf. You know, golf is my passion. I love golf. I can talk about golf all day. So just let me be and let's watch this tap in birdie on the last hole, this nine hole. And I will include a little screen with my score for this nine because I know some of you guys are going to ask me what I shot. And at this point, recording this vlog, I have no idea either. <laughs> the only other thing is there's no line. Yeah. I don't know where to put the ball. Is there no Oh line? wait, is it the does blue? It not, yeah. yeah it's the alignment is the blue. I never realized. That blue one. So you have to put it in the blue flower. Yeah. Oh. I'm always like, am I innocent? <laughs> okay, we have now taken a little break and we are now on the back nine. My hair is in a bun, my shirt's untucked, I don't know man, it's like a brand new gen. What happened during that 20 minutes that we were eating? Really have no idea, but I guess we are about to get started. So before we get restarted, don't forget if you do stop to eat, please take a little bit of time to swing a little bit, especially when you have a narrow hole like this. There's nothing worse than playing your first nine, stopping to eat, and then not being warmed up for your tee shot on the 10th hole. Make sure you give yourself that time because I know a lot of people don't. Preferably, actually, it's for me, I would rather not stop for that long because you don't want to be sitting down anyway. It's much better to just keep going, you know, stop after the round. But, you know, every now and then you do need to have a little feel, a little bit of a drink. So that is fine. Just make sure that you do warm up before you tee off again because our aim is always to avoid injuries. And when you sit down for too long, and you just go out there and start swinging at maximum speed, you are going to get injured. So <laughs> let's not do that because I see a lot of people doing that all the time. Let's avoid it and let's start making better decisions and not going and eating a nasi lemak and then going straight to the tea box. Me? Yeah. <laughs> let's see if your hybrid makes it. <laughs> I think the hybrid makes it. What do you want? Go in the hole! What do you want? What do you want? Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's the putter. It's the putter. <laughs> well, this one I can actually do that though. If my putter goes mm. through every time I do that, I just miss <laughs> it. <laughs> Look at mine. Yeah. Oh, no, but mine is like a claw. Thank you. 
Yeah, I put it in my glove on. <laughs> the glove. really be the butter. And then some people can't miss. Yeah, I think that putter belongs to you. I think the putter's yeah. made for her. Hi. Difficult, difficult shot. Need to hit it high enough that it carries those bunkers, but low enough that it doesn't hit that tree. So, and I'm on a downhill lie. We'll see what we can do. Ready? So far. <laughs> 